Chef Buff Army, how are we all doing? I'm doing my first review on this channel. It's true, after one of my subscribers, Wigger83, that's seriously his name, he requested me to do a review on my weightlifting belt, the Inzer Forever belt. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in today's video. Alright, first off, let's go into the basics. If you're a beginner lifter, you don't need a weightlifting belt. A weightlifting belt is used to help increase the intra-abdominal pressure when you lift and protect your back. Inzer is a very reputable company. When you're trying to protect your back, you want to make sure you're making the right investment and going with a company that actually produces quality products. So I'm not talking about, you know, that $20, $30 belt. This Inzer belt right here, the 10 millimeter forever belt, uh, costs I think approximately $80 plus shipping. For Canadians, we always have to pay more duty fees and other bullshit, so I think it's about 110 bucks. Probably the most common question for those trying to order a belt, they see people with single prong, double prong, and levers, and they want to know the difference. Here's the quick difference. It's really a difference between the prongs and the lever. It comes down to personal preference. It will not affect you whatsoever when you're actually trying to lift some heavy weight. This single prong is just as effective as the double prong when it comes to wearing a prong belt. All this means is when you put it on, you got to make sure it's nice and loose. You have to have a good grip. You're going to open it up, make it nice and tight, and then close the prong. Some people don't like this. Why? Well, it's simple. When you're lifting a heavy weight, and maybe if your grip's giving out, you're a little bit fatigued, you might have a problem getting that level of tightness that you want. I noticed a lot of female powerlifters or weight trainees that use belt will tend to go with the lever. What the lever is instead, it's like a belt buckle you adjust. You make the right adjustment so that when you buckle it up, it's a simple, you know, snap. It'll tighten to the right level that you need. The other questions you guys might ask is, you know, what type of belt to choose? Well, there's a 10 millimeter belt and a 13 millimeter belt. I went with the 10 millimeter. That refers to the thickness. And as with quality belts with Inzer, this is one single layer of leather with suede on the outside. I went with 10 millimeter because in powerlifting competitions, a 13 millimeter and most you know, powerlifting unions is not allowed. The difference in the amount of support you get is quite negligible. So I chose the 10 millimeter, and as I said before, the forever belt. This just refers to the level of quality of this belt. I mean, this belt will last you a long fucking time. Apparently some of these rivets were also used in NASA, NASA space shuttles or something like that. I had a friend that with a pickup truck ran over his belt to help break it in, did not bust it up, still firmly secure, does the exact same job. This thing will last an incredibly long time, most likely for the rest of your weight training career. The other beginner question I get is how do you break this sucker in? Because when you get an Inzer belt or a high quality belt, it comes stiff as hell. Because it's one solid piece of leather, you gotta break it in. It's meant to support you. So what a lot of guys will do will, you know, roll it up, put it underneath their bed or a heavy weight, let it sit, and then roll it up the other way. What I did is on Sunday, watching some football, what I did for about 30 minutes each way was just to roll it up into a tight, tight, tight ball one way, do the reverse. I did that for maybe one, two hours. I did that two Sundays in a row, and within several weeks, my belt was well broken into, and now it conforms nice and right and tight with my spine and my abs. People then ask me, you know, how do you get this custom made? I didn't. I did it myself. I wrote a care lifts. Why? It's a powerful message for myself. You could write your own name. I think that's pretty cheesy. You can do whatever you want, but with Inzer, I think there's over about 30 different colors you can choose from. I will say quickly for my international customers, that the belt, especially if you're getting a custom made one with a color that's not black, will take more than several weeks to arrive. So be patient. It took me approximately, I believe, four or five weeks before my Inzer belt came. I'm not endorsed by Inzer. At the end of the day, you have to do your own research. I did mine. I spoke with top powerlifters, and I concluded that Inzer, a very high quality brand, it will last me forever, this belt. I'm thoroughly satisfied. It is sturdy. I customized it. The price was solid, you know, within comparison to every other place. You have to do that exact same research. But suffice to say, I love my Inzer belt. If I had to rate it out of 10, I'd rate it at 9.5. Why? I'm taking that. 0.5 off because Canada, America is not in the middle of fucking nowhere. We always have to pay duty fees. We pay about 20 to 30 percent more. We're just, you know, I'm five hours away from New York City. I live in Toronto. I don't live in Uzbekistan. No disrespect to my Uzbek brothers. But I mean, come on guys, work this shit out. Chef Buff Army, that's all I have to say. I love my Inzer belt. 
You gotta make sure if you are going to buy a belt, you do not skimp out on it. You know, save them happy meal dollars and invest in something of solid quality. And if you are gonna get an Inzer belt, do not, under any circumstance, go with the, you know, black or red belt, because every other person has that shit. Be cool, be different, try something new. Thanks, as always, for watching. Make sure to like, share with friends, and subscribe. Buff Army, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.